Time to bundle up. In the last episode, we waited out bad weather in the antique harbor of Antibes. In this episode, we continue west along the French coast, destined for something truly spectacular. Welcome to Sailing Magic Carpet. Here we go, out of the harbor finally, heading along the coast of France right now under engine. Out of the hibernation cave. Uh, yeah, for real. It felt like six months uh, with that not very nice weather. It was actually only six days. Yeah, but, but it was six days. Also, we have to look for another harbor tonight because unfortunately it's about time that Luca is headed off to another next adventure. Bye, Luca! Bye! So, <laughs> we'll try to find the dock so he can uh, hop on a train and we, we don't just leave him stranded like in the good old days in a deserted island. <laughs> with a bottle of rum and the gun with one shot. <laughs> As the day rolled on, the skies cleared up, and by the afternoon, we were basking in beautiful weather. Snack time! Indeed. We have crepes, because yesterday in Antibes, we went grocery shopping, and... You can buy them in a package here. You can. You so can instead of peanut butter, in peanut butter jelly, I'm having banana tahini crepe. <laughs> The sun is starting to sink, evening is coming, and we're just going to be motoring all through the night. And as the sun went down and we settled in for a night on the water, I went up to the bow and played a tune for the fading day. a little bit of thermic coming up. I think it's just because it's winter and it's getting cold so the contrasts between uh, water and land are bigger. Uh, we'll see if it becomes saleable or not. But yeah, for now, not. I'm the happiest version of Amaya right now, sitting up at the bow, playing my violin. Uh, Dini just filmed one tune for you all so you could get a little sneak peek of that, but um, sometimes it's, it's so lovely, or more than sometimes, it's often so lovely to sit here and just play without any pressure of being recorded or anything and uh, figure things out, try new things, make a few squeaks and squawks, and yeah, that's what I've been doing. Um, this morning I learned a new tune a Duke Ellington tune, and so now I'm playing with that one. Dinner in a cardboard box for tonight <laughs> with potatoes. Oh, Luca is happy. Ah. <laughs> he gets his potatoes. And what else do we need? So we need some lemon juice, uh, yogurt we don't have, we'll take a bit of milk, boil and apply to meat cubes. Okay, marinate for one to three hours. All right, take All right. the cards out. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I can marinate it, but then we play cards a bit. What do you think? Sure. Yeah, fine. Uh, boil the tomatoes. We don't have tomatoes. Uh, for, <laughs> for 10 minutes. Well, for no minutes, you mean. We have no tomatoes. <laughs> Sieve to remove skin and seeds. We don't have skin. We don't have seeds. Wow, we can jump straight to 
heat a fry pan and add, <laughs> and add the marinated meat. Co cook for two to three minutes on medium low heat and turn the meat. Remove the pan. Okay. Add the chicken to the tomato puree. Uh, add the chicken to the rice. Cover and cook low heat for about 15 minutes. Da 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 da. -da. Awesome. Let's do this. All right. So the day faded, from golden hour to blue hour. The French Riviera glimmered off our starboard side, but we felt far removed from it, alone on our little island, filled with everything which is familiar to us. Aladino made dinner, the boat took care of itself, and there we were, magic carpet and the Mediterranean Sea. Just as first light appeared, we neared our destination, the town of Cassis on the coast of France. Good morning. So we're just arriving in Cassis. It is about 7.40 and we have one nautical mile to go. So one nautical mile should take us 15 minutes or so. And then I'm gonna throw down the anchor. The boys are sleeping and then I'll probably go rest a little bit and then uh, Luca's gonna hop on a train and leave Magic Carpet. The night was pretty uneventful. Around midnight, I think the boys started to sail, but it only lasted for a few hours before it died down again and then we went back to motoring. So the whole trip has been pretty much motoring, but the seas have been really calm, so it's been comfortable and easy. Alright, we are here. I just set the anchor. Dini heard the anchor setting and he came out to help in the cockpit, which is really nice. Um, but then he quickly crawled back to bed because he came out in, in his underwear and uh, soon realized it's really cold out here actually. It's got quite a fall crispness to the air. Um, so I'm going to go to sleep now, rest a little bit, and then we will continue on with the day. And now we're putting Luca in the dinghy. We're gonna take him to shore so he can head off to find a bus. And uh, Aladino and I might explore Cassis a little bit. Uh, it was a nap day. Uh, yeah, those evening night shifts are hard on us. Yeah, that's really true. It really feels like my brain is just not, not on today. Um, so give it a break and I'll make sure it switches back on for tomorrow. <laughs> but I'm not complaining. It was actually my choice of uh, doing this overnighter and I'm actually very happy to be in this area of the French coast, which I actually prefer a lot. And we are one hop away from our beloved boatyard uh, <laughs> village, Port Saint-Louis. Don't ever go there. Don't take this uh, advice wrong. But if you're into boats, then definitely the best place to leave the dinghy, do you think, Dini? Here. VIP. This in French? That does look very VIP. Yeah. You think that's okay? Yeah, I okay. think so. Perfect. So busy here. It's the busiest place we've been in a long time. Luca got on a bus and we waved goodbye, sad to see such an excellent crew member depart. Then, not used to crowds, we found a tree to sit under to watch the pigeons and to watch locals playing boule, a very popular game in France. The light became gold and we watched magic carpet bobbing around in the Bay of Cassis. So 
this place is very lovely. The sun is now setting, it's golden hour. We've just been strolling around the streets. And uh, what's next? Are we going back to Magic Carpet next? Yeah, pretty soon. It's yeah. getting cold. <laughs> it's not. We strolled back to our dinghy, but our outboard engine decided to stop almost as soon as we started it. We just ran out of fuel, <laughs> but we have an internal tank apparently. Which I filled. Which he filled. Woohoo! Just kidding. It died multiple times again. What are you checking, Dini? Well, somehow it works when the choke is on. The main jet in the carburetor needed cleaning, but with the choke held open, we were able to get back to Magic Carpet under power. Not one second too late did we decide to go back. <laughs> it's not actually cold, it's a lovely fall evening. It's not, it's so perfect. So, we are back home on the boat. Uh, still haven't decided on dinner plans, but we're gonna get to that next, I think. But right now, I am just basking in the glory that is this evening. I know Aladino is for sure thinking it's too cold, but there's something about that crisp fall air. There's kind of a smell of wood smoke drifting in the breeze. It just reminds me so much of growing up in Canada in the fall. You know, with the added things like, uh, church bells in the background, which you get less of in Canada. But I just love it. It it just, it feels like home. I feel so happy and just like this is exactly where I belong um, that I just never feel when it's 40 degrees outside. pleased to be here. What a beautiful, beautiful spot and what a great time of year. Even if the weather wasn't that good and we had to spend a couple of days in Antibes, I was actually quite, uh, what was I? Not processful, uh, produceful. I was Productive. What? Oh, productive. I was working on the boat a little bit, as always. Uh, there's always things on the list, but I was actually able to tick some things off the list, which uh, were 
yeah, there for a long time. So actually what I done, one thing is we have a NASA weather receiver on board. Um, it's not that we have uh, communication with the astronauts, but it's uh, actually a marine application brand. I had to re-soldier the antenna and now it's working again because I was never receiving anything. It turned on and off, but uh, yeah, I didn't get anything. Uh, the second thing was our speedometer and depth sounder. That was working once, but then it didn't anymore, and I just didn't want to um, take everything out and put everything upside down to access the wires, but I did an Antib, and actually I had power all the way to the device, so I had to disassemble the display to find the fault. Uh, yeah, sometimes you think, oh, but then the warranty is uh, gone, but this device, I don't know, is maybe over 20 years old and that's the way to do it. Uh, just have a look inside. And basically it was just uh, a plug on the interior of the display was not connected properly. Now that it is, we have depth and speed again. Well, the third that I'm very stoked about is still the heater. We wired up the heater and had that running. We turned it on once or twice even. Um, but still the duct tubing is missing so I'll have to order that. What else did I do? You complained a lot about the rain. I complained a lot about the rain. Very technical. But it is now the middle of the afternoon and we are headed off to change Anchorage and go into the beautiful bays that make up the Kalank region. The Kalank region, a clunky name for a stunning location. Les Kalank are narrow, steep-walled inlets with soaring rock cliffs that reach from sea to sky. I'm listening to the Tequila Mockingbird Orchestra which is a local band from British Columbia. Uh, but it's just so much fun. It's such a fun vibe and we're like coming into these dramatic cliffs and I'm listening to this dramatic music with violins screaming and I love it. The feeling of this place is more than a video can show. The rocks feel calming in their silent grandeur, and the filtered sunlight peers in over the top like a fairy tale illustration. So we've been here once before, but seeing it once before in no way detracts from the majesty of this place. It's just phenomenal, and especially coming in here later in the day when the sun has kind of come down, and I mean it's shady in here, but like up high on the rocks, there's still this sunlight and it creates this really dramatic effect of sun filtering in over the top of the rocks. So gorgeous. But for more about the incredible secrets of the Kalank, you'll just have to wait for the next episode. Thank you to all of you for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. An extra thank you to our patrons who make this all possible. And an extra, extra thank you to these folks who really go the extra mile to make sure these episodes continue. We'll see you all next week.